This is 40K Today, the podcast that's like your personal jello field against the world. Without it, there's just chaos. Hello and welcome to 40K Today. This is your daily 15-minute news, views, and interview show that covers the entire hobby of Warhammer 40,000. Today is Thursday, the 14th of May. I'm your host, John Damaris, and today on the show, we talk to an amazing artist who has done some incredible fan art. Andre Serafanov has created some really dynamic art pieces set in our favorite setting. But before we get to that, I got to sit down with one of my good friends, Jarrett, who owns Power Nine Games in Las Vegas, and we had a candid conversation about the pandemic. We're running a poll on our Facebook and looking for the answer to this question. Is it okay to proxy models on the tabletop? Right now, it looks like the vast majority of you say it's fine, but with caveats. Lots of great comments as this poll is generating a ton of discussion. Swing by the 40K Today Facebook and join in the conversation. The global pandemic is having a huge effect on all of us. We all know and love our local game store owners. They curate the place where we get our goodies, but more important than that, it's the place where we go to meet others with similar interests. The local game store is a huge part of the hobby and likely the place where most of us were first exposed to the amazing 40K universe. I sat down with my good friend Jarrett to discuss how the pandemic is affecting his store and what steps he's taking to take care of the community. All right, Jarrett, you own a game store in one of the best cities in the world in Las Vegas, Nevada, called Power Nine Games, and we're bringing you on to kind of talk about the plight of the game store manager. It doesn't have to be negative. So um, tell us the situation of the game store owner. Sure. Situation. Plight plight does imply some negativity. That's fair. So let's talk about, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about what's going on since the pandemic hit? Like, you know, Las Vegas, as far as I understand, it's pretty locked down. So what are you guys utilizing the time for? And then what's your, what are your plans for the future? So the situation in Las Vegas isn't necessarily as dire as it is in some of the other cities across the country, but we have gotten a high degree of, um, we'll say, people are encouraged to to shelter in place without an actual shelter in place place order. There's been a shutdown of non-essential businesses from, I want to say, March 16th through the end of April, and we're just now being allowed to open back up for curbside pickup and deliveries with no real end in sight for when we will resume a normal mode of operations. Well, the one thing I will say is all the casinos are closed in Vegas and you know that they have a lot of pull. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm pretty sure things will, you know, when it's safe to do so, will get opened pretty quickly because there is a lot of dollar signs sort of motivating action there. Not saying that's right, right or wrong. I'm not, putting a value judgment on that, but you know that that's going to be important. Sure. Well, it's interesting to note that even when this all started, I think very close to the drop when the shutdown order went into place, the casinos had already either furloughed or made the decision that they would not be reopening their doors until June 1st. So regardless of what any and I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this is right. Regardless of what the governor or our mayor might have to say, uh, the major casinos are not taking any reservations or booking until the beginning of June. Very cool. Well, as you know, my parents live in Vegas, and I actually looked up flights recently because I am. Um, when things clear up a little bit, I'd like to go see them. My mom's going crazy. She asks me every day, "Will you come see me?" And I'm like, "Yeah, mom." When it calms down, and the last time I checked, flights are like eighty-eight dollars round trip. So if you guys are planning a trip to Vegas, oh man, maybe, maybe in the near future when things have calmed down a little bit and it's really hot, might be a good time to go. I imagine that the flights will be really cheap. On that note, John, we should absolutely go on a cruise, you know, to kind of shake things up a bit. I imagine those aren't very expensive either right now. <laughs> right? Or crowded. <laughs> but so. anyway, uh, back to your original question, you had asked like what we're doing to stay busy and try to maintain some semblance of sanity and order during these times. Uh, there have been a lot of background projects that we are able to focus on. There's a lot of things that we're able to do with by not having customers or bodies in the shop that are, have opened up for us. We've been working on a bar for quite some time, a liquor bar, and the the time that it has afforded us has allowed us to finish up the physical construction of the bar. We've done a number of res- renovations in our store from creating a employee lounge and private gaming room and streaming setup, and we've kind of moved uh, our office 
around a bit. Uh, a lot of things that occur on the back end that hopefully the customers will feel the effects of without necessarily uh, noticing them right when they walk through the door. Okay, so you guys are getting into streaming. That's interesting. So do you see that as like um, a way to promote your business or is it just like a fun side project? Like what's, what's your goals with streaming at the store there? A little bit of both. There, we don't have our we don't have lofty aspirations to become the next uh, Team Covenant or Beast of War or anything like that or 40k today. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> all right, it it, <laughs> it is something that we're looking at doing as kind of a way to increase our outreach and give people something to do and tune into when they're at home and they can't make it out to the shop. Right, because it might be a while where there's only curbside, and normally. One of the great things about game stores is you get to gather with your friends mm -hmm. and have that camaraderie and the gentle ribbing and the not so gentle ribbing that sometimes goes in at a game store. Um, and all that's kind of been taken away from all of us. So having this opportunity to sit in chats and make fun of each other, I think is a good thing. So do you think your is your local community pretty excited about that? Uh, we have this is actually sort of something that we haven't really rolled out with yet. We've done a few test streams. Mostly, my manager Henry has been rocking it with various uh, painting and then online uh, drafts with a Magic Arena, etc. But we are planning on doing more tabletop gaming and board gaming, etc., to both showcase new products and to give people something to tune into to, to watch players of various skill levels flex their flex their stuff. Uh, we're in an interesting situation because we're a little different than most game stores, John. And I know you've been to the shop a couple times. We're we've actually got 6,000 square feet of space and we are more dedicated to running events than your typical game store. So that puts us in an interesting situation when we are still enforcing social distancing and maximum occupancies for, for group get togethers. Uh, we are more focused on community building and running events than we are on retail, or at least we have more of a, a, parody in that than you'd find, I think, in most traditional game stores. So this shutdown and the continuation of restrictions on gatherings is going to have long-term effects for us. Right, right. So do you guys have any plans for sort of, sort of addressing the, the obvious shortfall that's going to come? Like, are you going to pivot? And one of the nice things about being a small business is you have the opportunity to do some different things, right? So... Yeah, we're looking at a number of different options. As far as the actual running of events, we're going to see what sort of directives are handed down from our local government. Uh, we are probably looking into enforcing or requesting, I should say, the use of masks and gloves and various things for our in-store events. But at the end of the day, there's only so much that we can do to ensure the safety of our customers. We're, at, we're still going to have to we're still going to have to run events, but they will have to be at a smaller size than we've used to run in the past. All right. Well, uh, one thing that you could consider is we just had Adam Abramowitz on from Army Painter about two weeks ago, I think. And they're releasing a new hand sanitizer line that they're making <laughs> that they're going to sell right through game store distributors. So you'll be able to get hand sanitizer in your Army Painter rack. Um, <laughs> Just as, a, as, a, as well, I think it's really smart, right? It's it's going to help because people are going to want to feel safe, but they're also going to want to gather and play board games and, right. and miniature games and everything else. So, um, something to keep your eyes out on. No, that's um, a really clever pivot, and kudos to them for that. And it's actually something I'll have to take a look at. Yep. All right, Jared. Well, thanks for joining us, and thanks for kind of giving us an eye into the mind of a game store owner during this trying time. I think it's been illuminating, and I wish you all the best. All right. Thanks very much, John. That's Jarrett. And as you can see, he's a great guy. I would encourage all of you to take some time to show support uh, to your own local game stores, whether that's just a quick card or a hello or or maybe buying something at curbside pickup to uh, help them get through this pandemic. That'd be great. Next up, we look at some amazing art with Andre. Today's episode of 40K Today is brought to you by Frontline Gaming. Frontline Gaming is a one-stop shop for all your Warhammer hobby needs, discounted products, American-made gaming mats and terrain, and a full line of miniatures painting service and daily hobby content. And this can all be found at FrontlineGaming.org. And welcome back. I was browsing the other day on Facebook, and I saw this amazing picture that to my untrained eye looked like a movie still. It looks so realistic. And I was like, oh my God, they're making a 40K live action movie? I'm so in. And then I was sort of disappointed to find out that this was just an art piece, but then I was excited to find out that there was more art like this uh, done by Andre Serafanov. So our own Steve Joel sat down with Andre to discuss his process 
and how he comes up with such realistic, awesome 40K art. Andre, thank you for joining us on 40K today. I really appreciate your time. Uh, let me ask, first of all, do you play 40K? Is is that why you've started doing 40K artwork? Uh, yes. Hi, Steve. Uh, actually, my first um, I first met Warhammer as a Dawn of War player uh, on, on PC. Yeah. I started to play in the game, and I was fascinated by the effects and different interesting factions. I had never seen things like that before. And it instantly dragged me into the universe. I started to read a lot of the lore, codexes. I saw a lot of cool illustrations of this dark and grim and greedy world. And uh, I started to make my own sketches. After that, I was hired as a 3D artist by Wargaming and started to work on World of Tanks. Uh, There I understood how to create uh, high quality 3D models. And uh, last year I decided to return to Warhammer uh, because I saw new Primaris models, yeah. new designs. It was the first time I bought the figures from Games Workshop. Uh, I bought initially a starter pack, uh, No No Fear. It was very cool models. I, I started to buy more. Uh, to grow my army. I didn't yet complete uh, painting and other things to, to play tabletop. Uh, I decided to invest my all, all my time to create CG version of these cool designs and transform them into artworks. Well, what I want people to do is, is if they go to our Facebook page, 40K Today, we've got all the links there to get over to your pages so that they can see the artwork. Artstation.com is... is is the workplace you're at, but if they just find you on Facebook, um, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll link to it. The art is stunning. I want to ask you how you do it because uh, I can see uh, one of the great things when you click on the links is you can kind of see the process as you build up to the finished artwork. But the white models you start with, are they literal models in real life or is that a 3D rendering on a computer that you've done? How do you do that? Uh, yes, uh, actually, you see the final couple days of work uh, because I already have uh, models of uh, a lot of primary marines. I have intercessors, interceptors, uh, reavers, uh, eliminators. I didn't yet release uh, them, but stay tuned. Uh, and I use these models. I created them for about an uh, half a year at my spare time and uh, now i just grab this model uh, make uh, appropriate pose and make final render uh, and the, the sequence you can see on our station is like uh, uh, my final render and after that i make a post effects in photoshop to create a final illustration wow well look it, it the the work is so stunning and can i ask um how long it takes to get from you know the white model that you have that we can see in the original photos through to the finished piece of art uh it's about two days uh 16 hours i i think uh, to create one uh, final artwork if i have uh, models prepared but right. to prepare models itself, uh, it takes. Uh, it's hard to me to estimate the uh, time I I used to create them because it was at a spare time. Yeah. I started and I stopped, and uh, it was one hour, one day, and one two hours in the, right. uh, another day. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's one month for w- one model to create it during in your uh, like uh, in your routine daily time so about uh, yes it's one month one month I think per model that fair. you have in here so with your three space wolves uh inceptors flying backwards and shooting and just doing the most this is it's just incredible it's very hard for us on a podcast to describe it so i need people to go to facebook have a look at the art week that we're talking about and you'll see the amount of work that's gone into it so where do these appear is is there any way for you to make a, a living from this i know that you're an artist you know for your job but is there a way for you to make any money off of this or is this just purely for the love of warhammer uh, at the first, I'm a big fan of Warhammer, and I 
wanted to express uh, what I can do with my skills today and uh, probably it will make uh, some income for me but it's not that important the more I I think more about the joy factor because yeah. I'm a little bit bored of the things I do on the on my daily job and I want to make something more interesting right. at my spare time so well, Warhammer is a very good thing to do. Couldn't agree more. Warhammer is a very good thing to do. Andre, thanks so much for doing what you do. This is phenomenal work, and I can't wait to see more from you. Thank you. That was Steve Joel speaking with Andre about his art. Make sure you go check out the link in the show notes to his art station where you can see a step-by-step on how he builds these images up. We're winding down, but before we say goodbye, it's that special time of the day. It's time for Model of the Day. Side note, Anyone else get that jingle stuck in their head? Well, if you do, it's all Steve's fault. He wrote it. It's the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day. Today's model of the day legitimately blew me away. The Warsinger has made custom satans and his deceiver is something to behold. The use of wire and hot glue <clears throat> to build up a dynamic scene will make you scratch your head and wonder, how did he do that? <laughs> and not only that, he did a great job painting it up. Uh, as always, there'll be pictures of it on our Facebook and a link to it's the Instagram post that sort of describes the process. It's a jaw-dropping piece, and you should definitely check it out. If you have a model that you want us to feature on the show, or, or even one that you've painted yourself, don't hesitate to let us know. We're looking for beautiful painted models to feature on 40K Today. And that's it for another edition of 40K Today. Thank you so much for joining us. A big thanks to our content producer, Alex Boehner, our social media guru, Tani Gates, and our technical producer, Seamus Ronan, for all their hard work in producing this show. Also, a special thanks to you, the listener, who we appreciate very much. If you have not entered our contest yet, you should definitely do that. We're giving away $5,000 in prizes, and you can find out more information at 40kprizes.com. Just for listening to this podcast, you actually get five entries in the contest. Just enter the keyword daily40k at 40kprizes.com. We'll see you tomorrow, but until then, for Steve Joel, I'm John Damaris, and that's what's happening in 40K Today. Today.